This project is titled Into the Garden, an almshouse for queer elders. It is a direct reaction to the lack of current provision for our Asian queer population. At the moment, there is only one care facility catering specifically for queer people in the entire UK, Tonic Housing. With over a third of queer elders going back into the closet upon entering traditional assisted care facilities, the lack of these spaces is tragic and dangerous. My work is situated in Harlow, looking specifically at two rows of terraced houses in the heart of one of its suburbs. Located opposite the neighbourhood shops and between two schools, my work questions if and how an enduring queer space could come to be part of the suburban fabric without needing its users to quieten their queerness. In intervening in this site, my project learns from the members of the Gay Liberation Front who squatted two rows of terraced houses in Brixton in the 70s. They inhabited the houses, knocking down internal walls and garden partitions to create a place to live and build their radical politics. My project follows a similar path, taking the existing terraces, removing their garden partitions, and within the existing masonry structures, altering more flexible internal partitions to create two floors of single level flats and living spaces whose primary entrances face into the garden. The variety of these units understands that the aging queer population is not monolithic in care need, age or relationship status. These new living units in the terraces are reconnected by a filigree timber circulation. It is an undulating portico, one that curves to protect the existing trees on the site and bulges to provide spaces of pause and connection, an architecture of embrace. These moves come together on the ground floor plan. The primary entrance faces the neighbourhood shops on the top right. In the terraces, flats and shared living spaces, workshops and classrooms can be found. At the heart is a common room that divides the garden in two, creating space for a larger, more open kitchen garden on the right and a private wildflower garden on the left. This arms house is a space of permeable refuge and a place of memory. Elders wave to children on the school run from reworked porches. This light touch to the exterior is pivotal allowing the residents themselves to choose how open they want the home to be. We can imagine on a hot summer's day, two children pulling their mother into the garden while people are chatting, growing carrots. On the roof of the common room, a physiotherapy session is taking place as someone does laundry in the house. An elder waves to a child on the school run, chatting to them briefly. The garden is divided in two by a shared living space, an uncommon room. To me, this room is the heart of the project because in many ways it is so uncommon. Queer spaces are continually forced to reappropriate architectures not designed for us. The opportunity to use this project to create a space almost entirely distinct from the existing architecture and to question what I would want this space to feel like was really powerful. In the end, it came to be a question of the ground, of what it would mean to create queer ground. Here I imagined the floor to be tiled with queer stories made using the clay from the ground of the site by the residents themselves who would imprint objects significant to their lives on the tiles alongside their stories. Over time, the floor would colour, creating a material archive, one that would survive any change in legislation, one that could conjure an infinite queer imaginary. This floor would be the one on which people would meet. It would hold their lives and their possessions with their tenderness, protecting their memory.